You got to eat big to get big. You got to eat big to get big. You guys heard me say this a million times, but I'm saying it again. Let's just stop here for a second. As much as I like Ronnie Coleman and Rich Piana and praise them for their great physiques, I do think we have to disagree on this subject. Although I do understand where they're coming from as I'll explain in a bit, but if you've been in this industry for a while, you've probably heard someone say this glorious holy phrase before, eat big to get big. And in that phrase, a lot of supplement marketers saw an opportunity and behold, they made the mass gainer. So in this video, I will go over in which rare case you might actually want to use this supplement and in what other cases you want to avoid this mass gainer or weight gainer altogether. Now you might actually need to eat big if you're, for example, a professional bodybuilder like Ronnie Coleman and Rich Piana or a strongman. Their bodies are simply so massive that they need an enormous amount of calories to even simply maintain their size let alone bulk up to build a little more muscle. So in their own case they're actually right. And since a lot of other bodybuilders also go on a huge bulk in the off season, one might think that they need to eat a copious amount of food as well. And the mass gainer does sort of strengthen that idea, because let's be honest, it does sort of sound epic, like mass gainer. Just the idea of packing on a huge amount of size and getting checked makes me pumped and want to go to the gym. But it's time to get real here. You probably don't need that much extra calories. Most people will only end up gaining excessive fat, which they then need to cut off, which they won't because cutting is very difficult and they will just end up staying fat. In this case, it's very obvious that a mass gainer will do more harm than good, but in a few rare cases, it might actually be be helpful. In this video I will go over what's exactly in a mass gainer, how much protein most of you need, how big of a calorie surplus you should probably eat to build an optimal amount of muscle without gaining too much fat and who can still benefit from this supplement and finally whether I think you should take it or not. So without further ado let's start with what exactly is in a mass gainer and why someone would want to take it. The mass gainer is simply just protein powder with extra sugar. A lot of extra sugar so if you need a few extra calories to gain muscle this supplement is just very convenient. But that's where the catch is, when you need those extra few hundred calories. And let me emphasize this again, only when you need the extra calories. And even then you need to give your body high quality food first to actually build muscle. You can't expect a supplement to fix the rest of your diet. In reality, these supplements aren't that too high of a quality either when you compare them against real foods like chicken breasts and such. So that's why it's important to note that if you haven't tried fixing your diet first, you probably shouldn't even be looking at this supplement. I'm very sorry for telling you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. But even those guys like Rich Piana and Ronnie Coleman, they just ate like crazy instead of opting for this weight gainer. It's difficult at first, but it's definitely a better option to get as much real food in first and then supplement with what you need if you fail to get it out of your diet. So in the next part we're going to assess why one would benefit from the mass gainer because he needs the extra calories and if you're a skinny guy it's very common for you to think that you need it but it's not necessarily true. But before that I think it's best to describe this situation for the people that don't actually need it because in this case it's a lot of people. If you haven't actually tried fixing your diet I think it's already clear. It won't help you because what you're eating is probably crappy to begin with. And I think there's a saying that you can't polish a turd and I think it heavily applies in this case. But the next part will also help you a bit with that so don't click away just yet. In my intro I briefly discussed the idea of eat big to get big and while it's a topic for a whole different video I will briefly discuss what the research suggests on what the most optimal calorie surplus is for the majority of people to build muscle. And before that it's important to mention that you actually first need a sufficient amount of protein to build muscle as well otherwise you're just going to add 
fats. If you're, for example, only eating sugar as a diet, you won't build any muscle and in fact you might even lose some muscle mass as well. So my recommendations are from 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight or 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. I won't go over it in detail because I have done so in the past, but for example Brad Schoenfeld, one of the most important researchers out there, recommends 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight as well. Which which is very close to my recommendations and this goes without saying but you also need a good training program so let's take a look at the actual calories this part is going to be crucial because we're going to apply this to the mass gainer later on. Even though I most of the time always check out multiple study, I'm mainly going to focus on two because surprisingly there weren't really that many on this subject. This one by Gerf et al took some elite athletes and either had them eat as much as they wanted or let them overconsume on about 500 calories. And as you can see from this graph, those that had a higher calorie intake did gain about the same weight in muscle but the overconsumption group gained an astonishing amount of fat more. I do personally think that I need to note a couple of things that I saw when I was looking at this study because although statistically insignificant on average the overconsumption group did see slightly more muscle gains and since they're elite athletes they probably won't really build as much muscle as opposed to a newbie who's just starting out. So maybe there would be a bigger difference between the two groups if they were untrained individuals. So the amount of increase could actually be significant for these athletes. Nevertheless, I do think that the very obvious heavy downside heavily outweighs the small potential upside. If you gain that much extra fat but not that much extra muscle, it's probably better for both health and appearance to not eat a big surplus of about 500 calories. So now you're probably wondering how big should that calorie surplus actually be? At least that's what I was wondering. And even though I didn't really find a clear-cut answer, I did dug up another study where they used competitive natural bodybuilders as subjects. One group had a surplus of about 600 calories and the other group had a surplus of about 100 calories. This time there is a more distinct difference. The group with the larger surplus had about twice the amount of muscle gain, but in return they saw almost 10 times the amount of fat gain. This is something I think you should take into account because if you're going to gain that much extra fat, you're probably also going to have to diet more aggressively and if that's the case you're going to lose more muscle mass and probably also the extra gains that you made. So going over a 500 calorie surplus like the subject did probably isn't a good idea. You're best off with a modest calorie surplus. From my own experience and according to most out there, a slight surplus of about 250 to 500 calories max is going to be the most you need. And I personally think that sticking to the lower end is going to be best for most of you out there. And if you're even at a point where you're above 20% body fat, I do think that health comes first and that you need to lose the fat before you go on this lean bulk. Okay, so now that we've got the ideal calorie surplus, it's time to take a look at who can benefit from this mass gainer. And for this, we're going to first compare protein powder versus this supplement because of course most should take a look at their total protein intake. I think you should aim for a maximum of one protein shake per day. The rest of your protein should come out of your diet. Yes, if you don't get it out of your diet, more than one protein shake will probably be better, but just eat the damn protein, you're probably making an excuse if you need more than one shake. Now we take a look at the calories because the amount of protein is going to be about the same for both mass gainer and the regular whey protein powder. Now I looked at both the mass gainers and the protein powders from the exact same companies and I came to these exact numbers. On average the whey supplement only contains about 100 calories per serving, while the weight gainer contained about 400 to even 800 calories, which is just way too much to get from one shake, if you ask me. Keeping in mind that you only need about a 250 to 500 calorie surplus max to get 
good amount of gains. Given that you're eating around maintenance, one mass gainer shake will already get you in that big surplus where you're gaining a decent amount of fat. And I personally believe that you should just try to eat something more in the first place before going to a mass gain or shake. Even if it's ice cream, it's still better than eating pure sugar. Not great, but still better. Yes, I just wanted an excuse to eat ice cream by filming this video. Let's see who can actually benefit from this. It's going to be those individuals who already eat in a calorie deficit and have a hard time eating any food at all. And I'm talking about those extremely skinny guys, not just regular skinny ones. They just don't have the appetite and that's why I believe that when they physically can't eat more, the mass gainer shake can be beneficial, but that's only a small 0.5% of the population and maybe even lower. So take it from my advice, you should probably not take it at all. So if you don't need those extra calories to get your caloric intake, which is like I said the case for most people, you should avoid mass gainers because it will just put unnecessary unhealthy sugar in your body and will likely cause fat gain which is very hard to lose. It won't build that much more muscle so it's not really worth it. Instead regular whey protein is going to be a better option and if you want to you can even add some ingredients to it within a blender and voila you quickly got the extra calories you need. Aim for a small calorie surplus of about 250 to maximally 500 calories to avoid unnecessary fat gain and even stick to the lower end for better results. Please remember to smash that like button if you found this video helpful and if you want to support the channel and make sure to subscribe for more helpful tips. If you have any questions feel free to ask them down below and I will gladly answer them. You can always check out my training programs with the link in the description or you can watch some of my other videos to learn more about building muscle and losing fat. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys later.